Oh, hey, how's it going? I'll try and make this as short and precise as possible. My name is Nathaniel Mann. I'm a Canadian Nordic combined athlete competing on the World Cup and Continental Cup circuit. I am currently the last remaining Nordic combined athlete from Canada. And for those of you from North America watching, Nordic combined is a combination of ski jumping and cross country skiing. It's one of the original winter Olympic sports and it's the third most watched winter sport in Europe. Now, this may come as a surprise to many of you, but Nordic Combine is one of the only winter sports in Canada that doesn't receive any financial support from government organizations. So Canada doesn't really help you with funding and all? No, nothing. So how do you expect to compete on like uh, World Cup level? That is a good question, Olympic gold medalist Severin Freud. The way funding for sport works in Canada is organizations such as Own the Podium, Canadian Sport Institution and Snow Sports Canada determine which sports will get money and how much money. The National Sport Organization or NSO then decide what athletes will receive that money. Simply put, the amount of money an NSO receives is largely based on the performances of the top male and female athlete in that sport. So if a top athlete in that sport gets a gold medal at the Olympics, that NSO is going to receive more money than in a, another sport where the athlete got fourth at the Olympics. One of the biggest problems with this system is it means that in a lot of sports, only the top few athletes are receiving this financial aid. And as a long-term development sport, such as any aerobic sport, including Nordic Combined, where the peak is usually around 25 years old, you basically need to be one of the best in, your, in Canada at 16 years old to hope to have any support while you develop as an athlete. And the problem with that is most people aren't at 16 years old. In my opinion, it seems that Canada has always struggled with long-term development, especially in aerobic sports, where we see a lot of athletes being forced to retire because of financial restrictions and never potentially being able to reach their performance peak. It's not the perfect system and no one's saying that it is, but on paper, it's the most reasonable and fair way to do it. So in a sport such as Nordic Combine, where we've never had an athlete win an Olympic gold medal or any Olympic medal, this system that we have set in place means that every year we get less and less funding until basically we had no funding, which is precisely when my international career started in order to mine. In order for me to receive any funding or actually even open up the conversation of receiving funding, I would need to finish top 13 at an Olympics or World Championships event. Which circles back to the original question asked by Mr. Freund. How can I expect to compete with all these other teams and nations that have million dollar budgets and everything you know, covered, organized, when I don't have any of that? To that I'm saying, well, I'm still trying to figure it out. And in the meanwhile, I'm training as hard as I can and, and doing everything I can to continue to get better and improve. Now, despite all of this, I've still been able to get better every year and get better results every year. We operate on the most inexpensive means possible. So while I'm in Europe, it's just me and a coach. Um, we rely on other nations to help with ski service. And that's something I pay at the competitions. As of right now, I work three jobs. One of those is online. So I'm able to do that while I compete and travel. And because the last jumps in Canada have closed, it means that I spend about half the year over here training and competing in Europe. The money I earn goes directly towards sport and luckily I've had some sponsors that have been able to invest in me and therefore I give advertising and representation back and that's been able to help me so far and gotten me to here. I've never really believed in crowdfunding or asking people like yourselves to help fund my athletic career. I don't feel that it's the responsibility of individuals to fund an athlete competing internationally but the responsibility of a nation and of these organizations put in place. You may be wondering, despite everything I just said, why am I doing this now and what changed? Unfortunately, I'm halfway through the season and running out of options. There's two competitions left in this season and every competition so far I've been able to get better and better. And to stop now would be for me really heartbreaking as I know I have more in me and I know that I can do better. The first of the two competitions is a Continental Cup in Eisenhower, it's Austria. The estimated cost for this event is about 140 euros or 200 Canadian. It's close by and it's a Continental Cup so luckily FISC covers the accommodation for these events. Now the second and most important competition for me would be the World Cup in Oslo, Norway. 
A top 30 World Cup result for me means that FIST would then be able to help pay for my expenses to compete at these events and cover accommodations, etc. Which basically means that I'll be able to do more World Cups and therefore probably have a better chance of getting a better result. Though because this one's outside of Central Europe and it means flying to the event, the expenses are much, much more. The estimated expenses for this competition would be 368 for flights from Slovenia to Oslo. Accommodation would be around 861 Canadian. Then because I wouldn't be able to bring a coach as it would double the price of the trip, I'll be paying another nation to coach me as well as provide ski service. So that would be another 359 Canadian. Add in baggage fees of 143 Canadian and that gives you a grand total of 1,932 Canadian dollars, 1,344 euros, or 1,459 US dollars. Now, this number may seem super specific and that's because it is. I'm not trying to just, you know, raise money for a season and, and get all this money and do whatever I want with it. The idea behind this is that this is just enough to cover the expenses for the last season and, and basically, you know, get me to where I need to go. I've never believed that it's up to, you know, people like yourselves to, to fund an athlete's career. Like, I, it isn't. And everyone has their own expenses. Everyone has their own, you know, things going on. And even if they do have extra money, why give it to an athlete when you could give it to a charity for those way, way less fortunate than I am? And I understand that. But if my story connects with you and you feel like you can make a difference and impact on my life, then... I can't thank you enough for your donation. But I just want to say thank you again for watching this video. I hope it wasn't too long. You know, just people to hear my story, I think it's always important. And even if you're not donating or not doing anything, I just appreciate that you took the time to watch it. Um, have a good day. Enjoy whatever you're